plants build vast empires that dominate their territory. Most of these dynasties are established peacefully through the sacrificial hard labor of a queen's offspring, like the Campanotus colony we saw in our last episode. But some empires are founded on violence and bloodshed. Before these new dynasties can rise, others must fall. Most ant colonies defensively hide their nests underground or within the solid wooden walls of logs and trees. However, the species we will follow in this episode builds their nest in large terrestrial structures, citadels that can be seen from afar. This mound, at the edge of a forest in the foothills of the Jura Mountains in Switzerland, is home to a vast empire. Thousands of ants are moving in and out in a constant flurry of work. They are foraging for food, disposing of waste, and continually working on repairing, enlarging, and improving their home citadel. These ants belong to the species Formica rufa, commonly known as wood ants. They are building such a large mound for a reason. As the sun shines on it, it collects and stores heat. This temperature regulation helps the development of the larvae and boosts the growth of the colony. The sprawling array of workers shows perfect cooperation as they labor in unison. But this place wasn't always so peaceful. Before the rise of the current rulers, this was the home of another colony that was overcome by a single young and shrewd invader that usurped the established throne. Let's look at the history of this empire and the bloody coup that led to the dynasty we now see. A few years ago, this place was home to a peaceful underground colony of small black ants. They belonged to the species Formica fusca, also known as slave ants, and they had been foraging in this area for many generations. But the peacefulness of this empire did not last. On a clear spring day, a large foreign ant entered its territory. A young wood ant queen who had just completed her nuptial flight. She was ready to start her own dynasty. But unlike young queens from other species, she had no intention to start from scratch. She came here to usurp the throne of an already established empire. She struck gold when she came upon the slave ant colony and immediately started infiltrating their nest. Ants defend their nests to the death. Whenever a Fusca worker spotted the invasive queen, a fierce fight erupted. The young queen's superior size and strength gave her an edge over the attacking slave ants. But she had to be careful. If she encountered too many workers at once, she could easily be overpowered. Many of her kin have died while trying to infiltrate a colony, but she was in luck and managed to stay alive long enough to absorb and adapt to the colony's smell. Ants identify their nestmates by sensing their chemical pheromone signature, which is unique to every colony. The longer the queen stayed alive inside the colony, the less the native workers recognized her as an invader. Some even mistook her as one of their own and offered her food. Before long, she was fully received as a member of the colony. But she did not come here to integrate with the workers. She wanted to take the throne. To achieve her goal, she still faced one big obstacle, the old queen. 
Once the wood ant queen was allowed to move around freely in the nest, she headed straight to the queen's chamber to complete her coup with a final and bloody stroke, decapitating the old queen. With this last gruesome act, the usurpation of the throne was complete. Since the wood ant queen perfectly imitated the pheromone signature of the old queen, the colony didn't even realize that their queen had been replaced. The Fusca workers toiled on without knowing that their colony had been usurped by a foreign queen and that they had in fact become slaves to a new dynasty. Now that the queen had established her rule, she started to lay her own eggs. The slave ant workers lovingly reared the new offspring unaware that they were tending to the larvae of a different species. Within a few weeks, the first wood ant workers were born. For a few months, wood ant workers and slaves worked side by side in a mixed species colony. But over time, the Fusca workers died out. As the wood ant workers became dominant, the colony's behavior shifted away from slave ant habits and towards that of the wood ants. One of the most notable changes came in a dramatic change in nest architecture. Whereas the slave ants dug deeper into the earth to enlarge the nest, the wood ants also started building upwards, creating the mound that we see today. Out of the ashes of an old empire, a new one has risen. We can't wait to tell you more about this amazing colony. Subscribe so you won't miss out on updates on this and other colonies we cover on this channel. The Hidden Empires of Ants, the Rulers of the Undergrowth.